Hello everyone, it's Seth, probably better known as Seth Ron Olive, and it's time for another edition of Against the Odds. So last week, on our Against the Odds poll, we finally had Mortal Kombat come in first place. Mortal Kombat has been kind of the running joke around Against the Odds. It has come in second, I can't even count how many times. It feels like it's been on the poll forever, because it always does good enough to stay on the poll, but never does well enough to actually get in first and get made into videos. But it finally push through squeaking out a victory by like one percentage point so this week we get to head to modern to play mortal kombat spirits so we'll talk more about mortal kombat and this mortal kombat spirits deck in just a minute first a quick reminder if you enjoy against odds and you enjoy this mortal kombat spirits deck it would be super awesome of you if you could take a second click that subscribe button down in the corner of your screen it's a great way to support the channel and the site for free so first off, the namesake card Mortal Kombat seems simple. Four man enchantment, if we have 20 or more creatures in our graveyard at the beginning of our upkeep, we win the game. So when I first read this card and knew we were going to be playing it for against the odds, my initial idea was we could play kind of just a value deck. Seder Wayfinders, Eternal Witnesses to get back our Mortal Kombat if we mill it. Stuff like that, kind of slowly mill ourselves out. Then when I really thought about the numbers, and if you break down a magic deck, let's say a deck has 25 lands. So that leaves 35 non-land cards, and then we got to have four Mortal Kombat, so we're going to have about 30 non-creature cards in our deck, no matter what we do, just to have lands in the Mortal Kombats, which means we only get 30 creatures, which means if we want to get 20 in our graveyard, we need to get like two-thirds of the creatures in our entire deck into our graveyard. They can't be in our hand, they can't be in their battlefield, they can't get exiled. That's a huge percentage. If you think about how a game would play out, that means a lot of times we're going to have to get all except maybe 10 cards of our library, 15 cards of our library into our graveyard. That's a big order, especially with no spells. We can't glimpse the unthinkable or anything like that because everything has to be done with creatures or else we make it even harder because we have less creatures to get in the graveyard for Mortal Kombat. So the value plan quickly went off the table. I just, I don't think it can work. Instead, I decided we have to find some sort of combo where we can do this all at once. We need to be able to play Mortal Kombat, play another card, and then just win the game. Get 20 or more creatures in our graveyard all in one shot. And that card does exist. It takes some work, but after some digging, I came across a name Death's Aspect. So a name Death's Aspect, when it enters a battlefield, it costs 6 mana. When it enters a battlefield, we can search our library for any number of spirits and put them into our graveyard. So this makes it much easier. If we play a deck that's essentially all creatures, other than our lands in Mortal Kombat, we should have around 30 creatures, and then if they are all spirits, even if we draw some spirits and play some stuff on the battlefield, when we cast a name, we should be able to just search our library for every single creature in our deck, put every single one into our graveyard, and then on our upkeep, we win the game with Mortal Kombat. So there's still some restrictions. Basically... <laughs> along with having to play all creatures, which is a Mortal Kombat deck building restriction, we have to play all spirit creatures. So, apart from our Mortal Kombat and a name and a couple of spells, every single card in our deck is a creature and it's a spirit, because that's the only way we can make sure that we'll get enough in our graveyard with our name to trigger Mortal Kombat and win the game. We also have a Mirror Mad Phantasm, which meets the qualifications for a card in our deck. It is a creature and it is a spirit, and it's kind of like our backup in name. 5 mana, you get a 5-1 flyer, but the big thing is the ability. You pay 1 in a blue, you shuffle it into your library, and then you reveal cards from your library until you hit the Mirror Mad Phantasm. The Mirror Mad Phantasm goes back to the graveyard, all the other cards you reveal go into the graveyard. So, and you can activate this multiple times. So, if we get a Mirror Mad Phantasm on the battlefield, we can activate it, mill a bunch of cards, activate it again, mill a bunch of cards, activate it again if we have to. By that time, we should mill almost all of our deck, just by the law of averages, and that means we should have the 20 creatures to win the game with Mortal Kombat. So, there are a couple of spells. In the actual breakdown of the deck, we have 29 creatures, all of them spirits. We have the four Mortal Kombats, <laughs> lands, and three spells. So, Damnation is pretty obvious. However, it's kind of tricky why it's in the deck. You might be thinking, well, you're playing a deck with 29 creatures. Why in the world do you want Damnation? So, Damnation is in our deck not so much to kill our opponent's stuff, 
but to kill our stuff. I was worried that the game would go really long, we would cast our spirits, we only have 29 in our deck, so that means if we have more than 9 spirits in our hand and on the battlefield or exiled, then we can't get 20 into the graveyard, so Damnation is... Essentially, put any number of spirits, or all the spirits, from the battlefield into the graveyard. So that's why it's in the deck. It, yes, they can sometimes kill our opponent's stuff, and that's awesome, but it's to make sure we can get spirits in the graveyard when we need to. And single dismember, just kind of hedge against in fact, in decks like that, nice to have an option to kill a creature when we need to. Again, we could also turn it onto our own creature if we were one short. Anyway, let's talk about the spirit. So, one of the problems with the inane Mortal Kombat plan is it's pretty expensive and it's pretty slow. So, we need to be able to slow down our opponent using only spirit creatures. So, we have Wall of Reverence, which is pretty sweet. Four mana, we get a 1-6 flyer, and then at the end of our turn, we get to gain life equal to the power of target creature we control. So, we just a wall, we have a huge blocker that gains us one life. If we have some bigger spirits, we can gain multiple life, helps us kind of stay in the game, stall things out while we're waiting to win. Windborne Muse is a ghostly prison on a stick, costs four mana, two three flyer, uh, makes it hard for our opponent to attack. Wax Main Baku triggers whenever we cast a spirit and it gets a key counter, and then we can pay one, remove any number of key counters, and tap X creature. So if we cast a spirit every turn, we get a counter every turn, we can tap down our opponent's biggest creature, can even keep us alive against an Emrakul or something like that that's in the game off Nahiri. So these creatures kind of slow down the game, and then we have some protection. You just saw our slow down the game cards. We need them to stay alive, so Drog Skull Captain, Cure, Great Grass Spinner, and Selfless Spirit all help us keep our other spirits alive. So they give them Hexproof, they make them hard to be targeted, they pump them up so our Wall of Reverence gains us more life. Uh, Selfless Spirit's also nice because it can sacrifice from the battlefield. That's another thing I looked for in our spirits. If there was a tiebreaker between what spirit went in the deck, it was, can this get itself in the graveyard if we happen to be like one creature short of triggering Mortal Kombat? So Selfless Spirit protects our stuff and we can just put it in the graveyard anytime we want to if we're using it to win with Mortal Kombat. Uh, Spellqueller and Mausoleum Wander, we can't play real spells. We have to have all creatures. So these are the cards that can hopefully keep us alive against combo decks if our opponent's playing Ad Nauseam, uh, help us force through our Mortal Kombat and so forth. So since we can't play Mana Leak and Remand and Negates and all that stuff, we gotta get by with creatures. They're pretty good ones though. They're also spirits. Mausoleum Wander also can sacrifice itself like Selfless Spirit to get in the graveyard. And then we have Kami of False Hope, another slow down the game card. Basically, a spirit creature that is also a fog, and it sacrifices itself. This is like the perfect card for our deck. It's everything we want. It slows down the game by being a fog. It's a spirit creature, so we can search it up with a name to trigger Mortal Kombat, and... It sacrifices itself, so we can leave it on the battlefield, sack it to get it in the graveyard. Uh, in the mana base, pretty straightforward. A bunch of Cavern of Souls helps us force through our name against counterspell decks, which would be a problem. We really need a name to resolve to win the game. Uh, a couple of fetch lands, some shambling vents, some shock lands, and some basic lands. In the sideboard, we keep the theme going as much as possible. Even in sideboarding, we can't really just take out 10 creatures, bring in 10 spells, even though it'd make our deck better, because then we we won't have enough creatures to trickle Mortal Kombat to start up with a name. So Kami of Ancient Law is our enchantment removal spell. Also, another spirit, we can sacrifice it to get it in the graveyard. Uh, Kitaki's War Wage is our Artifact 8, basically the ancient grudge of our deck. The Spirit of the Labyrinth, uh, it's good against cantrips, uh, card draw decks, just a one of. Azurius Herald is essentially a Kitchen Finks, or the spirit version of Kitchen Finks. Gains us four life when it enters the battlefield. 2-1, can't be blocked. So it gains us some life against aggro while also being a spirit. Two dungeon guys to tap down a big threat if our opponent has a primeval titan, for example, or something else big. Dungeon guys can keep it under control. And then we do have a couple of spells. So we can bring in a couple, but we can't bring in that many. So two thought seizes to help against control decks, combo decks, negates also to help in those matchups. And then in aggro decks, we can bring in a dismember or two to help fight against a couple of creatures, buy us a little more time to win. So that that is Mortal Kombat Spirits for Modern, and that's our Against the Odds deck for this week. So, is this going to work? And 
I don't know. I think as far as making Mortal Kombat good, an aimed S aspect is clearly the best way of doing it. If you just look at the numbers, as I mentioned in the intro, it's going to be super difficult to get 20 creatures into your graveyard in any other manner. And aim it does something extremely unique and nothing else in the modern format, and maybe in Magic does that, especially staple to a creature. Of course, because of that, we have the big deck building restriction, which is a huge concern. We don't get thought seizes. We don't get negates. We don't get any way to protect ourselves other than chump blocking with our spirits from attacking aggressive decks. So there's a lot of issues. However, we also have a lot of reasonable cards. Mausoleum Wander and Spell Queller are actually powerful cards. Uh, Drog Skull Captain is good protection, as is Kira. Kami is growing on me is one of my favorite cards is a fog on a body so there's a lot of cool good stuff going on uh, one of my concerns is we may win some games if we just get really nutty spirit draws i could imagine hands that don't have any of our combo pieces and are like mausoleum wander selfless spirit double drug skull captain there's a decent chance that we just play those cards and win the game by attacking uh, obviously that's not our goal but i could imagine it happening on occasion but when it comes right down to it there's just not that many ways of building it once we know we have to play all creatures and we know we have to play a name so we have to play all spirits there's just not a lot of options we could play intentional bad spirits but I really think these are the best spirits to achieve the goals of our deck and even though some of the cards look like good cards I really think this is the best possible way to live long enough to cast in a name to find our Mortal Kombat and win the game so I'm hopeful that it'll happen but I don't think our record is going to be great on this one despite our best efforts we're just a little bit slow for the modern format so I don't think our record is going to be great but I think we will sooner or later pull off the name death aspect mortal combat combo kill uh anyway that's been our deck tag for mortal combat spirits thank you very much for watching i hope you enjoyed the video and i will talk to you soon